Good evening, everyone. You are listening to the Digipire podcast with your host, Mr. John Higginbotham. And you can find me at johnhiggenbossom.com, and you can also find me, of course, at digipire.com. You can find the resources and everything that we've mentioned tonight on the podcast at digipire.com slash episode 33. So, I've had a little hiatus since I've last spoken to you back before Christmas. I can't remember exactly what day it was. But now we are up and running back and ready to get the get the, the season two of the Digipire podcast up and running. And you can find all of our podcasts at digipire.com slash podcast. And there you will find all of our, like I said, all of our previous podcasts and future ones. And it's also there that you can ask any questions of me. You can go to digipire.com slash ask if you want to do that. Tonight we are going to be discussing on episode 33, we're go- <laughs> episode 33, sending, hold on a second, building your business with cold emails cold emails meaning that they have not requested information from you or have not signed up for an email list you're basically cold calling you're calling people you know you're calling people you're sending unsolicited email i guess you know so to speak spam a lot of people call it and so we are going to be just we're going to be i'm going to be answering the following questions we're going to, I'm going to answer, answer, is it legal? We're going to talk about is it legal or not? Is it effective? What about the Can Spam Act? Where do I get the emails? And how do I send them? This is just going to be a primitive search. We're going to discuss it a little bit. And uh, this is going to be a short podcast. It's going to be about 30 minutes, plus or minus a few minutes. So we have a lot of material to go over. And I will be with you in just a moment. Okay, so I have some experience with sending emails, sending a bulk email. And it started way back in... The year 2000, 2000 is when I was, a lot of you already know the story, but it's one of the ways I first started making money. There's several, but this was one of the very first, besides eBay. But um, in the year 2000, the year 2000, I started, you know, thinking about email marketing. I'm not sure how it got on my radar. I think it was because I was always intrigued that you know I had a lot of spam like a lot of people at that point I'm like if, you know, if these people are, are so persistent in sending these emails there has to be something to it so I started studying it I started studying what they were selling what they were doing because they, they were always selling something and so I started studying it back back in 2000 and at that point I had a job I wasn't I wasn't miserable but I actually had two jobs I was working at UPS and I was working at Coke and I was doing split shifts, so in between those times, I was just constantly, constantly researching, looking for ways to, to, to make money outside of my job and be independent and, you know, all those kinds of things. So at that time, I noticed that a lot of people were promoting casinos. They were promoting gambling sites, and at the time, it was very illegal i mean to have a gambling operation not so much being an affiliate of one i think they're two two separate things but i figured that the the the, the gamble the gamble was was worth it so i started making plans to promote casino websites and they, you know they offered very generous payouts i mean like uh, Fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. Every time someone signed up, and made a deposit. Some of them had rev share, meaning they split the revenue with you. 
they just had a lot of different uh, different payment terms. And of course, all of these people were offshore, but I just knew that there had to be something to it because I was always getting them. I was always getting them. I was always getting them in my email. You know, these gambling offers and pills and potions, and even at that point, porn, uh, which you don't see that much. You don't see that. You don't see that as much now, if at all. So anyway, I got to the bottom of it. I started scraping. And I want to, I want to, I want to uh, say this first. I'm not going to get into the to the ethics of all this, or whether it's wrong or bad, or you know all that kind of thing. But the way I looked at it, it was just like calling like a, a million people and and hoping someone bought what you were selling. You know, maybe maybe it's not the best way to 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 sell something, but people do it. And so that was, in my mind, the digital way to to do that, to knock on people's doors and offer them something that, that I'm selling. Since I was so backwardly shocked, especially then, that there's no way in hell that I was going to knock on a bunch of people's doors trying to sell them anything. So anyway, that was my first uh, entry into affiliate marketing. So I started, I found an email scraper. I can't remember how what, what I used back then. I found an email scraper. And I harvested, you know, tens of thousands of emails, and I bought a a bulk email sender, and I started sending. And so I had, you know, two or three computers set up in my in my apartment. That all they did was uh, was send emails just nonstop, all you know, all the time, all day long, all night long. And I did very well. I did very well doing that. And so then I thought, well, people are, are always in chat rooms. What if I, you know, promoted this in, in chat rooms? Which I didn't. I didn't promote the casino affiliate program in chat rooms, but I, I promoted other things. And so between the, the chat rooms, I was spamming my link in chat rooms and and sending bulk email. I was making a healthy amount of money and you know back in 2000 and back then it's not like it is now people didn't know what affiliate marketing was they didn't know you know you could actually make money online and all that kind of thing it just wasn't as 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 common knowledge I guess is what I'm looking for as it is today and so that's what I did and there that's the year that I quit my job as well at UPS and at Coca-Cola because it just got to be too much of a hassle to, to go into work. I mean, I was making more in a day than I would make in a week or, or more at, at Coke and UPS. And everyone was just like flabbergasted that, that, I, that I was able to do that. And I still think about it to this day, like, oh my gosh, I just can't believe I did that. I was so lucky that, that I stumbled onto that and just, and I, I, you know my never-ending quint my 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 never-ending search for information and knowledge was it was never quenched even then, so that's what I did and I did it, I did it and I I made a nice chunk of money until you know the, the can spam come out and I got scared and there's some high-profile cases of. Casino operators being shut down and getting in trouble and all that kind of thing. So I thought, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore. For, for several years, I, I stopped doing it. But the chat rooms are still going strong. Even though I stopped doing my my bulk email, I still has still spammed my link in the chat rooms. And, and that, even though half my income was gone, it was still a heck of a lot more than I was working than when I was working two jobs. And keep in mind, this is back in 2000. So people that People that I was, was was friends with then, or actually acquaintances, or people that I worked with, you know, were just flabbergasted that that I was still able to to keep my apartment. I just bought a car, and you know, and for all intents and purposes, I wasn't working. I did not have a job. So that was 20 years ago. There's been lots of ups and lots of downs, as there are when you're an entrepreneur. But that's enough of me. That's enough of, of my story of money. If you have already heard that, I've, I've talked about it the different iterations of it through since I started this podcast a year ago 
So now I am going to show you how you can send cold emails to your uh, to or knock on people's do cold car knock on people's digital doors and they and then not expect can't get everything can't get anything out tonight. So with that in mind, just give me a few moments and I will be right with you. You can find all the, re the resources that I mentioned at digitalpire.com slash episode 33. I'll be right with you. Okay, center, building your business using cold emails. The first thing we're going to discuss is, is it legal? And it's legal as long as you follow the, the CAN spam act that George Bush enacted in, I think it was 2003. That's about, that's when I stopped doing it, and then I started using a company called Pacific Marketing that that did it for me, and then I was back in business pretty much. I wasn't making as much money, but I did. But they're no longer around. But anyway, so the can the cam spam act basically forces you to if you want to be in compliance and not breaking the law to put an unsubscribe link in your email. And make sure that that the people the people that are on your email list can opt out, and you cannot charge them to opt out. And the second big thing is you have to have a an address in each of your emails to to stay in compliance. So the short answer is yes, it is perfectly legal to do that, but as long as you follow the guidelines of a can spam. And as you probably have noticed over the past 20 years, you're probably getting just as much spam as you did back then. And it's not slowed down. And there's a reason for that because it, make, it makes you make money. I mean, there's still the, the money's in the list, and it's still true to this day. You just have to be careful on, on how you approach it and how, how you market your business using that method. Like I said, it's the equivalent of knocking on, you know, if you're sending out 5 million emails or 5,000, it's the equivalent of knocking on 5,000 doors in the analog world and asking them to buy what you're selling. And is it is it polite? Maybe not. Is it rude? Maybe. I don't know. That would be something up. That would be something for you to decide. I think it all depends on what you're selling and what, and what your goals are. But it is perfectly legal. And anyone who tells you otherwise is not telling you the entire story. It's illegal if you do not put an unsubscribe link in your email and and don't charge them for doing that and you actually unsubscribe them for email list and do not mail to them again. It's illegal if you don't put your address in the email that you're sending. So in that regard, it is illegal. So... You have to ask the right kinds of questions to get the appropriate answer sometimes because there's a lot of half truths out there. And, you know, if you look on any forums or or anything, they'll tell you that, that sending emails is, is a waste of time. You don't make any money doing it, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. And like I said, I mean, it all depends on on what you're selling and, and who you're selling it to. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to sell a, let's see, what, what could I use an example? If you're trying to sell baby clothes to a bunch, to, to 5 million men who don't have any kids and don't have any intention of ever having any kids, then you're probably not going to be, you're probably not going to make a lot of sales. But if you send 5 million emails to pregnant mothers, you might make a lot of sales on your baby clothes. So it all just depends on the audience and what product you're selling if you have a product that that has mass appeal that appeals to you know to, to everyone then you're going to do better than if you have some kind of niche that has a narrow market or a narrow audience so you just have to consider the source on the advice that you get or the the comments that you read in the forum and you just have to learn from your own experience and just take in as much information as you possibly can. But there's a reason for everything. There's a reason that your your email box is constantly getting bombarded. You just have to know how, if you're a marketer, you have to know how to work that to your advantage. So 
Okay, that is the first question. Is it legal? And as I have discussed, it's perfectly legal as long as you follow the guidelines and the parameters of the law of the Can Spam Act that was enacted in 2003 by George Bush. So, excuse me, if you just give me a few moments, I will be right with you. So the next question, is it effective? Is a cold call emailing effective? And like I mentioned, I mean, it can be very effective depending on what you're selling and who you're selling it to. If you have something that has a, a broad reach, something that you can market to the masses that, you know, about everyone might want, then you're going to do better than someone who have, who's trying to sell baby clothes to to 500 million single men that have no intention of having children. So it depends on what you're selling and who you're selling it to. And, you know, I I have from a personal experience, I've done very well with email marketing even back 20 years ago, and it still has not changed to this day. The, you know, the, the rules have changed a little bit, and the methods that you use to to make it happen have changed but email marketing even with the advent of social media and you know all the different ways you can contact people email is still a strong a strong force to get your message across and to make sales whether it's a right whether it's the right fit for your business is something that that you need to decide for yourself, but you, you you know you can on all the forums you'll find that you'll find you know a lot of people that that say that it doesn't work you know especially cold email and you mention that to some people and they just get really really pissed off they just you know they don't like it they it doesn't work you're wasting your time blah 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 all you know so on and so forth but sometimes you just have to find out for yourself and even if you fail the first time. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. I mean, just because you put it in the newspaper and you don't make any sales, I mean, it depends. It all depends. It just all depends. Marketing is not an exact science. You have to, it's a trial and error kind of a thing. And you might have success with something that, you know, the other person will not. So it's just about, you need, you need to compare apples to, to apples. You might, you just can't, there's just not a one size fits all solution for everyone. But yes, it does work. Email marketing works. Cold call, email, cold email, cold, uh, emailing cold contacts work. Knocking on a million doors works. Do you just have to decide if what you're selling has the appropriate margins for it to work to make your time it's all a numbers game like anything in business like anything in life really it's just a numbers game so i'm going to you know, go over i'm going to show you some uh, give you some resources on and the, on the tools that you can use to to use your to to build your business with 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 email marketing and I encourage you to research your spam. Research the the spam that you're getting. Where are they selling? I mean, they're not you're not getting. They're not just checking on you and you know sending you uh, best wishes and trying to be your friend. They're trying to sell you something. So I encourage you to to research your spam. I keep I, I keep an air table that all I do is research spam. I research or cold emails. Uh, I research you know. Websites, uh, search engine spam, or uh, uh, research uh, email spam. I just research, research, research. And so, if you can research your your cold emails, your spam, everything that gets dumped into your spam folder, or the things that you don't that you you know that you didn't ask for any information on, and keep records of it, you might find some patterns. You might find figure out what they are doing, kind of. Reverse engineering, I guess you can say. So, does it work? Absolutely. Does it work for everyone every time? Absolutely not. Just like everything else in life. So, with that being said, I'm going to go on to the next question. If you just give me a few short moments so I can have a glass of water, my mouth is very, very dry. Okay, so what about canned spam? Okay, canned spam is something that you don't need to worry about unless you are breaking the rules of can, the canned spam act. Like I mentioned earlier, canned spam does not mean that you cannot send unsolicited email. It just means that you need to follow the rules when you do it. And the two basic rules, the most important rules, are 
that you that you include your address and the emails and that you include an unsubscribe link and you actually unsubscribe the the email user or the user from your email list and don't send to them again so those are the the two main rules that you need to, to worry about but can the can spam act does not make emails does not make it illegal to send a bulk email i've been doing it a long time off and on like i said i started doing it in 2000 i stopped doing it in 2003 when the when the can spam thing came out and i started it up again if maybe 2004 i started using pacific marketing maybe later on in 2003 i started using pacific marketing with a lot of success which they are defunct now but there's no reason why you can't do it yourself there's just but you need to learn you have to you have a lot that you, that you need to learn so that is a can spam the can spam act of 2003 and the gist of what you need to know okay so the next question i'm gonna go over the next two questions if you just give me give me like two seconds so how do you get the emails there are a lot of different ways to get the emails you can purchase a list you can purchase a targeted list from places like exactdata.com infofree.com infantry what's the infantry infofree.com anyway I'll, I'll list those resources in the, the show notes at digitalpire.com episode 33 so you can take a look at them or you can scrape them yourself there's also a tool that you can use to scrape those emails yourself which that seems so shady but you can do it and you can find that resource again at digitalpire.com slash episode 33 and i think it's adampark.com is the one i'm looking at or one i'm thinking about that that does the that you can scrape emails with they also offer a windows solution so that you can send the emails from your computer using an SMTP server which is what you'll be sending the emails through as opposed to sending them from an open port on your computer with your internet provider or sending them through your hosting which both things will get you shut down or in trouble that's, that's actually what I did back in 2000 I sent them to to my through my open port on my computer on the internet and at the time I was with who was the I was I had DSL I think it was what the Verizon I don't think 18 I don't remember who it was back then it's been so long ago and so uh, I was able to do it and they never said anything for me doing it but if you do it now you might you might cause yourself some problems because they they don't like that sort of thing sending commercial email through their system so that's where the SMTP server comes into play and you can you can input you basically you put in the credentials and it logs in the software logs in to the SMTP, SMTP server so instead of serving it from your hosting account or your internet provider on your home computer you send it through their servers and there's a, there's a lot of them out there a lot of them are bulk friendly some of them are not bulk meaning sending lots and lots of emails some of them are not but that's one way you can do it i'm actually going to be running an experiment on my lead gen secrets where they give you a hundred leads a day and you email them you can email them through your system or you can download the email so I'm going to do a test run on some of the, the free SMTP server services and I'm going to be running a, a a test run or an experiment to see if any of those people actually open their emails click on any links or all that kind of thing because that you know that a lot of people have have asked that and I'm curious myself so I'm going to do that I you can if you follow if you follow DigitPire on Facebook or you follow me on JohnHigginbotham.com or you're on my email list on DigitPire.com, you can find it anywhere on, on the website actually. Then you'll get notified when I run that experiment and what my results are. Um, so yeah. 
so you can buy email list you can scrape the emails yourself and you send them through that software or through uh, so, you know something like clickback I'm sure we're going to get to that in a minute so that's how you that's how you collect the emails there's a list some resources that I've used in the past that you can find the emails and like I said you can narrow it down you know very specifically so for example if you're trying to target real estate agents you have some kind of service that you want to sell them then you can get a list of you know 5,000 real estate agents email addresses and cold email them so okay I will be right back just give me a few short seconds Okay, the last and final final question that I am going to cover on building your business with cold emails is how do you send the emails? And there are several different ways, and they range. The, the prices are all, all all over the place, and it's something that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. I'm just going to give you the gist of what you need to do. The first way is that you can download email software from from AdamPark.com. They, they have a Windows program that you can that you can download and send them. That you load up your emails that way, and you you put in your SMTP server details. You find an SMTP service provider, and they give you a login, and you log in through you send the emails using that login through the Windows, the Adam Park email software. Keeping in mind that you want to make sure you scrub your list, a list verifier. That way, they also offer that service, the, the, the AdamPark.com email software. And the reason you want to scrub your list is that you don't want a lot of bounces. Bounces meaning that the emails go don't go anywhere because the user no longer is there. The email account's closed or, or just whatever. Their their storage has been exceeded or, or just all the other things that, that can go wrong. And the reason you want to do that is because just I'm got distracted. Hold on just a second. The reason you want to do that is because you will if you have a lot of bounces, you know a lot of emails that aren't getting through. It'll affect your reputation score, and your a lot of your emails will go directly to spam, and the the end user will never even get to see them. So you want to make sure that you scrub your list, you want to clean your list, so there there's no you get rid of all the honeypots like spam at xyz.com or or honeypot.xyz.com or admin dot at xyz.com. So you want to make sure that you you know you do it right the first time. The second thing that the other thing you can do is you can upload some SMT service providers will let you upload the list and you can send them directly through through their service. Like for example, clickback.com, which is one of the most expensive ones, but they allow you to upload purchase list and send through their services. So if you have the budget, you might want to to look at something like that. If you don't have the budget and you just want to try things out, you can, you know, find one of the resources that I've mentioned that, that I'll, I'll, I haven't mentioned it actually yet. One of the resources that that I recommend on the show notes at digitalpire.com slash episode 33, and you can find those there. Some of them will require that you actually have a soft software that you need to send emails yourself, and some of them you can send through their system. Some of them even allow you to make landing pages and all that kind of thing but whatever you do do not upload them to a something like Aweber or MailChimp or something like that because you will get shut down that very very fast and you will get in trouble and it's just not worth it 
Okay, so that's just a, that's a that's a little primer on building your business with cold emails, and I think I've covered the basics. I invite you to do your research yourself, and if you have any questions of me pertaining to this or any of the podcasts that we've ever done, you can do so at disacquire.com slash ask. You can get on our email list if at digitalpire.com slash podcast if you want to if you want to you know for links of like my marketing experiments and that kind of thing you can do that there and okay so I really appreciate you spending your valuable time with me I hope you learned something about marketing with emails once again you can find all of our podcasts at digitpire.com slash podcast and once again you will if you sign up for our email list there i'll show you or you'll i'll share with you some of my marketing experiments that i have run and will run with email marketing and a lot of other of my marketing activities so enjoy the rest of your evening and i will see you here next week on February the 27th at 8 o'clock p.m. at Eastern Standard Time. Talk soon and have a nice evening. Bye-bye.